casual banter. <laughs> um, all right, let me go take a look if we're live. I had a thing that said broadcast is live and I have a counter. Okay. Um, had to get out of there because it was live. Um, Sherry, how are Happy you? Happy Thursday, Sid. Happy good. Thursday. How about you? Good to see you. No, I'm good. Having some water here. So welcome everyone to the live stream. I want to see if we can start to see how many people come in. It's our first time doing this. So um, one sec, brand banner. Oh, my man Hector's in here. Okay, now I'm starting to see people. What's going on, Hector? Give it a minute. Um, we're almost ready to get going here. Right. Thanks for coming in early. Yeah. Hector's in New York. That's my homie. Um, Hi, Hector. Yeah, super excited for this. Um, we've been working so hard on this, Sherry, and so it's like exciting to share this with, with more than just, you know, the, the few people that we get to see during a pandemic, right? Exactly. I mean, it's actually so fun to be able to even just talk to people about what we've been able to do um, during this time, like being distant and having to do things in a completely different way. It, it is. It's really exciting to have like kind of like new people to uh, processize about pioneers too. So I'm yeah. really excited for it. Yeah, me too. Um, all right. I'm going to send this link a couple more times and we're going to get going here. I'm going to send it to, I got to send it to a couple group chats. Get all the people ready to go. Hi, Jeremy. I see you've got a let's go. Yeah, Jeremy's here. All right. So it looks like we have 13 people in. Might as well get started. Yeah. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Sydney Baptiste, the founder of Pioneers Apparel. Today we have head of product Sherry. Say hi, Sherry. Hi. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining us. We're going to give you a brief overview on the brand. We're going to start looking at product, which I have. So, where is it? Right here. Sitting right here. So we'll start looking at product in a bit. Um, but I wanted to get started with Sherry, yourself. Tell, uh, um, Introduce yourself to, to the people, like, you know, a brief overview of what you do, what you've done, why you joined the brand. I'll ask you all these questions, but we can start there. Okay, great. So um, I'm Sherry. I've been doing this for a long time. I make product. So I've been making product for nearly 30 years. I love making product. I have really loved making product for pioneers. Um, I've worked with emerging brands for the last decade or so. Before that, I worked with a lot of um, kind of like OG streetwear brands back in the 90s and then worked, did some more corporate stuff. I worked for Reebok. I was the vice president of product for um, the retail brand Alliance with Brooks Brothers and those guys. And uh, then I kind of moved to working with emerging brands because the energy is just unbelievable and you're kind of making something from scratch. You're making something that wasn't there before and right. it's it's really exciting. So uh, Sid and I were talking about earlier uh, before we became live and, you know, community is such an important part of not only Pioneers' origin story, uh, but the origin of this now PYNRS, Pioneers brand. Yeah. And we just have been feeling that community, even in the middle of isolation, even in the middle of this pandemic, we're feeling it all the place from the Pioneers, the original Pioneers yeah. community, the, the, run crew. the Pioneers community, the Boston-based emerging brand community. So shout outs yeah. to uh, folks at like Tracksmith and Ministry Supply that have supported the brand, offered advice. Um, Heartbreak, Heart, Heartbreak Hill Running Company, they've been- Yes, absolutely. Like it, we've just, we keep coming back to community and community keeps coming back to us. And that yeah. has been absolutely amazing. And we're, we're really, truly grateful. Absolutely. Um, can you just drop, name drop two of your OG brands that we always talk about, <laughs> that I love to talk about. <laughs> All right, so um, for, for the strange reasons, I became an accessory designer uh, early on in my career. I worked with Tommy Hilfiger back in the day when they were just launching a women's brand, and they were considered a, a one of a, a really popular streetwear brand at the time. And then I started working with Wu Tang Clan. Um, went back in the Killer Bees days. I worked with uh, Russell Simmons over at Fat Farm. Um, Sean John, when he was Sean John, I've uh, worked with them with even just a lot of sports folks. Um, Alan Iverson back when he was at the Apex, 
uh, Venus and Serena Williams. So between the athletes and a lot of these folks that are just really plugged in to what's happening in streetwear, it's been like a long and really great, fun journey. And it's so exciting to be part of something that's creating a niche that is absolutely brand new. Um, yeah. Performance streetwear, this is exciting and we're doing it right. And that's one of the things I'm really excited to talk to you guys about to you guys about tonight because um, we're bringing a lot of like really old school point of views into a new way of making product. But we're not forgetting like there are there there are even like little nods to couture through some of this, which has always been so vital and part of like streetwear, that sense of like hidden luxury. So I'm yeah. excited to talk about those. Sid knows I will never shut up about products. So get the yeah. questions going to us. And sure. uh, I'm happy. I'm excited to talk about the product. Yes. I'm going to give a couple more shout outs to my homies in New York, Rue Crew, Adam, Hector. Those guys have been showing so much love from the beginning, from when I even was like, yo, I need a name for this thing. I've been bouncing ideas. Um, I'm just looking at the chat right now. We have um, pioneers, captains, friends. We have my family in here um, and a lot of really cool people who've been supporting for for a long time. And so like shout out to the Trailblazers, um, all women's group that, that, that started in Boston. So just a bunch of love from the community. So just adding to that. All right. So. I want to start. Sabrina. I like your shout out. Thank you. Yeah, Sabrina's <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So first things first. Um, I came to you and I was like, listen, I want to start this brand. I think I, I can create a pretty cool brand, but we really need good fabrics. Like that is the most important part of what we're doing because what we find is that if you want to look nice, you can't, fa if you want to look nice, it's hard to find fabrics that perform. If you want projects that perform, it probably, you know, it's it's not really designed for like the streetwear culture. Like streetwear culture doesn't really have performance materials. And so like that was like the most important part. So do you want to talk about kind of we can even start with the shirts, right? Um, with the yeah. yeah. And and actually, I'm going to jump on to that because another thing that has been the synergy around the creation of pioneers has just been absolutely amazing. We, we talked about community, but there were also just we had a lot of people really believe in us in the industry also yeah. um it's not easy to get a new apparel brand off the ground because of even just things like mills don't want to sell to you because our orders aren't going to be gigantic at first yeah. we're not ordering like what nike is ordering and adi is ordering and those yeah. guys like we we're we're going to start you know a little smaller and we're going to grow and grow and grow and grow but they have to believe in us they have to believe in sid's vision and in and what pioneers means and what it stands for and they have to believe in what they're seeing um as far as what we're giving out to them so we found a partner in an italian mill that makes absolutely fantastic performance fabrics and they were willing to partner with us in a way that we can get these absolutely gorgeous european fabrics um that perform so beautifully um and and they will supply us with what we need uh mm -hmm. without giving us a hard time about you know having to order ten thousand yards of a fabric so yeah. all of our t-shirts um and also the basketball short down the road are made from this really butter soft gorgeous um nylon blend one of the things we really love about it and it's so dominant in the line is that all of the nylon is fully recycled yeah. it's recycled this was such an interesting thing the fact the mill that we're working with really pioneered this process i was unaware that there are absolutely hundreds of tons tons of fishing nets that are just laying there broken and and not degrading on the bottom of the ocean yeah. because you think about it commercial fishermen they go out there the nets get lost and broken and they fall into the water all the time they sink to the bottom of the ocean and there they just sit. So they are actually dredging up. Um, they've now dredged up, I think, the equivalent of the size of three blue whales, the biggest animal in the on the world. And they are reclaiming the nylon completely, retooling it. And that is what these shirts, I'm pointing oh, in the wrong direction because of the, <laughs> the, the change. 
that yeah. is what these shirts are made of. So it's a, it's a combination of that recycled nylon and elastane, of course, because everything that we're making has 360 degree stretch. Um, the butter softness of this is something that you kind of have to feel to really be able to believe, but it feels absolutely fantastic against the skin. Um, you know, it's, it's wicking, quick yeah. drying. It's a beautiful, beautiful performance fabric. The suppleness of it, it just, it's, it's, really one of my favorite new fabrics um and we call it renew because it is renewed fabric it's yeah, renewed it's from renewed fishing fabric. nets and it is renewed into this brand new brand that we're that we're creating all together yeah. all of us this community uh, yes. that i can't see i wish i could see them and so um yeah i know and uh, um so i just wanted a couple of nods to streetwear culture here first things first we wanted to throw something on there that was that was a little different so you're gonna see that this what how do you what is it how do you say this it's gross it's gross grain gross grain it's always, called grow grain it's so called it's grow grain. <laughs> <laughs> grow grain our designers i pick designers that are um that design for you know for for large brands and also have some sort of streetwear kind of culture or streetwear vibe or streetwear knowledge um and so one of our main designers um works for a boutique um, a major streetwear boutique firm and so when he came on i was like i need something that's going to bring this line together that's going to be it's going to call you know when you when you see it it's like it feels a little bit more streetwear than anything and this i think is that thing right um you're going to find it on every piece that we have i don't know exactly where it's going to be on every piece um but you're going to find every piece it gives you that like i don't know i can't, I can't explain i can't put it into words but it gives you that um you know off-white has their own thing um uh like stussy has its own thing every every brand has its own thing and so we wanted to have our own thing and this is going to be that yeah that uh, and, and and it's it's funny it's a, it's a little trim but it really captures like kind of this performance streetwear vibe right so we've got this like gorgeous lime grow grain it has a great suppleness and feel to it but then embedded in the center of it is a 3m um, luminescent, uh, uh, reflective band in the middle, if you want to look at that. Yeah. So, you know, nice. on the performance side of it, if you're running at night, this actually, that little piece of, of reflection has some candle power behind it and it will, yeah. it'll and help you stick out in the evening. And, and then also, also all of our prints are reflective. So they, they look great. It's like a gorgeous silver, but it also has some candle power in there. So that if you're, uh, if you're running, get, catch some car lights, they're going to see, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And then the cuts obviously a little different. You know, we, you know, we have the the draped, the draped bo bottom or back. I don't even know how to talk about it. Yeah. So that okay, I'll go into that hem because we were. I was talking earlier about how kind of we have some of these little nods to couture. So yeah. it it seems like just this really clean, easy, gorgeously, you know, um, curved hem. But the reality is, you can't just take a t-shirt. You know how usually you take your t-shirt, you fold it back twice, and that's how they do. Yeah. Ahem. We actually have a separate piece of fabric, a separate piece of pattern that's made to really make that particular curve. But we also wanted to set it in there in a special way because we wanted to add just a tiny bit of weight to the bottom of the garment. There's a reason yeah. that, you know, there's an X factor sometimes when you are buying a T-shirt from, let's say you're buying a $98 T-shirt versus a $12 T-shirt. And mm -hmm. you don't really understand why the $98 T-shirt looks and feels so much better on you, it's because of the pattern making that goes behind it. Kind of some of that really old school pattern making, how a, a, a shoulder is shaped, how a sleeve cap is shaped. Like I said, even setting in that band, we're adding just a little bit of weight there and it just it's just that little bit that just makes the whole shirt settle around the body yeah. a little bit nicer. It's the same, it's the same treatment that we have in the hem of the tank top. Um, it's a little bit of an ode, Back in the day, like designers like Dior and Givenchy used to actually drop tiny weights into the bottoms of the hems because that weight would help the garment. It would actually make it move and it would drag it down and it would bring it around the body in a really beautiful way. Yeah. And it's a real subtle nod to that. And it's one of the reasons why this is a brand that's a little different from uh, anybody else out there. I love it. I love it. All right. Tell us about this half moon that we put in here. Oh, uh, right. So, um, I, I have, honestly, I have sensitive skin, so I hate tags. I hate tags. 
I hate tags. Yeah. So we have a half moon on everything that we um, that we have in there, to basically, so that so we have our grow grain tab that's on the outside of it, but then we apply the half moon on the inside. So all of that stitching that's attaching that that trim to the neckline, you won't feel it yeah. on your own skin. So, so it's covered by that, and also we can apply a heat transfer that will give you, you know, like our pioneers main label, the country of origin, all the things that we have to have at the back neck, the size, so that yeah. you can see what those things are without sewing a label in there. We'd rather and have it really clean. And also I hate it when I have a heat transfer in the back of a t-shirt and you can see it on the outside. Yeah. That to me just seems cheap and not what we're about. So you won't be able to see it. So it's funny, it's a, it's a little detail, but it does a bunch of things. I mean, you could tell right here, right? Like, because we didn't put a half moon on this one. And I right. understand this is still a prototype, but we wanted to prototype and see which one we would go with. We love the half moon. Like, this didn't come with a half moon, but this one did, and we're going to put them on all. And so, yeah. Really We've cool. already done that. Yeah. We've already done that, that one was a, we knew immediately when we saw it. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Do you want to talk about, so, I mean, the women, this, this is a, a very favorite piece. For some of the ladies i've been asking it's because it's um, just so cute on it looks yeah. so cute so when we were shooting that piece and we were putting on different women different body types it looks so cute on everybody the yeah. um it's designed with just like a great little angle to the sleeve it's cropped but it's not like you know it's 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 a it's cropped at just the right spot and then it has this like gorgeous curve in the back so that you yeah. know you're cropped, but then you don't have to really worry about it too much. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Super, right. super cute on the body. And I hope everybody's been on the, um, the crowdfunding site so they can yes. see it on some bodies. So, just a really cute. And then even again, this was that piece, the women's piece. Yep. It has a seam that runs down the center back of it. And that is just how we created some additional shaping and just created a little bit of this, like just this like really pretty line. So when you look at it, it looks so clean. It looks just, it has a, a really nice vibe to it. But it, when you dig deep, we're really adding a lot of detail. So if, for example, this isn't on your prototypes. It was after we saw these prototypes that I yeah, added this. I changed all the side seams to what's called a French seam. Mm -hmm. So basically when you flip it inside out, you won't see any threads on yeah. those side seams Probably because extra. because that's just that's that's the quality we want to have inside and outside because that's the quality we feel like yeah, I love it. It's gonna sound like a little silly, but like we feel that from our community. Like I, I I'm like, my community deserves to not have threads against their <laughs> against their beautiful tender skin. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite pieces. Love it. Life. Obviously, they come, you know, you can wear them together. But the reason why I love this is because it's it's um, light. It's fashionable. You can wear it for a run. You can pull up to a day party in it. I love that fabric. All right. And so the fabric, fabric that you're holding is in all of our body wear pieces. This fabric is absolutely so, 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 so yummy. It, it, it just it feels like butter, like. You ever have, and this is a phrase that I use all the time in the industry, it feels like money. It absolutely just has like this, like je ne sais quoi, like it's a great, great fabric, gorgeous stretch. This thing really just feels amazing on the body. Um, and we're using this fabric on the women's um, half tight, full tight, the sports bra on the outside of it, we have a little bit more of a supportive liner inside of the sports bra. Oh, and it's also used when we get to the men's um, two-in-one basketball short, that's the liner inside. So the body wear pieces, we're using this fabric and it's absolutely just, it's a really, really beautiful fabric. That half tight, one of the things that also is another ode to the pattern making that we have, it has no side seams. Yeah, it's so it's just, a guess, really, really gorgeous. Um, lean silhouette. Uh, it's it's like one of those things I keep seeing sometimes, um, you know, like the long shirt jacket is really popular with women right now, but I'm seeing them with like these great little half tights like that. And it looks absolutely amazing. I love how so much of the line can just get, you know, you can, you can make this, you can make this yours. <laughs> you know what I mean, like you can make this like, yeah, there's definitely, there's, there's, there's a sweet revive on it, but it's, it's it then can comes back to you and and whatever your style and whatever your aesthetic is like 
I can't wait to see it. I hope that you'll like, please like tag us once you start getting the product and, and show us like how you're doing it because as a first offering, it's a small line, yeah. but you know, I think it's really, really versatile and, and it'll be amazing because we're having it in this color block, but also in black for in black. people like, hmm. Are we getting the black in the next prototypes that are coming? Um, yes. All right. So maybe we'll do yep. one. Yeah. We'll get more pictures once we get the second set. Um, yeah. We should have those. Um, we're, we should have those end of next week. So um, and understand folks that these are literally our first prototypes. That never happens. Like we are, we having someone like Sherry who can, des who can make sure that we're tight with this product design development and manufacturing that we, that, that we're working with. We got our first set of prototypes and we were able to take pictures and I don't think that ever really happens. So you're literally looking at the first pieces that we've touched and we're able to, to show you and there are going to be small changes, of course, like oh, for yeah. example, this is a little off, right? Like I remember us looking at this and how it's like not straight, right? Like that's, that's going to yep. be thick. The It'll printing be straight, isn't straight. You know? there, um, yeah. There's always like, there's tweaks that you made. Um, we're going to still look at a couple of rounds of prototypes. We've already made a number of updates. And then we were very practical and judicious when we were planning this whole thing out because we wanted to make sure that we had, you know, this offering ready for yeah. ready to go for everybody. So um, we already knew that we would be, you know, prototyping these colors for photo shoots here and then these colors for the next round. So. Yeah. For so sure. the next colorway is we showing up next. I but love it. this like royal and navy color black is just it's so great. I love the black too. The black is what I will probably wear, but I will quietly admire black. everybody who can wear that. <laughs> so a lot of people have been asking me about the black, and I'm like, I love colors like this. Like I, I love so. I love colors like this. I think Ariana looks great in it. I think Julia looks great in it. Oh you my know? gosh, they both look amazing in it. It's it's a it's a great, great color. That the lining on that one, if you remember, is a substitute lining. So the one that we will be Actually seeing in the next guess, prototype yeah. will have um, it. Will, it's a slightly more compressive liner, so yeah. that again we want to make sure that all of our streetwear is performing. Absolutely, and then also from the compression standpoint, we found that this version with this lining didn't hold everything back enough. It and wasn't meant to. So that that was that was frankly that was a little bit of a misstep from the manufacturer but that's okay because they really did they you know like like sid was just saying they hit it out of the park with these okay. prototypes and we're very pleased with absolutely um let's go into the woman's type it's just to stay with the same fabric for now so that, this is actually this might be my favorite piece in the line i totally <laughs> buying that like i i in my pick three that's why i said to you i said sid i gotta be able to pick two of those yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's a great great type. color blocking the pockets, this um, grow grain that's on each pocket, just like brings us so well. And then the pockets are big enough for your phone. They're 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 really they're they're secure enough. I love it has a, a higher the waistband. It's a little bit higher on the body. Yeah, it's that. really yeah. beautifully flattering. And then if you look at where that color block of the navy is coming, one. I'm so happy to see navy and black together again. I it's know. just an absolutely, just a really, you know, high end, gorgeous, bold color statement without that, that you don't really, anybody can pull off. They just, we're gonna make them because this is how we're offering this fantastic yeah. tight. Um, and it does, it looks so good on people, but that color block is also really slimming. Um, not that that is something that we have to worry about, but yeah. let's but, face you know, it, we do a little that. bit, right? I so I know I do. Tell and tell me about this high waist. Um, yeah, band. really. So like if you see the waistband is, is very wide. Um, it has a nice, but you can see there's a nice curve to it as well. These are all pa shaped pattern pieces. They're not straight pieces. We're not slapping this thing together. There is a little bit, uh, there is a, a, a reinforced elastic at the very top so yeah. that you won't have rolling of the waist. Sometimes with these wider waists, you'll see that they roll down if you are sitting or if you crouch or whatever it may be. So that'll keep the stability in there. And again, this fabric is just really, really just absolutely I wish I could Feels give it to you. So, through, through, so through wonderful years. on the body. This reflective is really dope for running, obviously. Yep. Um, this reflective right here is really dope for running. You can secure your phone in the back for running, or you can put them in the side if you're at this grocery store. Yep. Or the day party, because I know that I'm turning up at day parties all 2021 if I can. Um, and the so length on these is really nice too. It's a 7 8 tight. 
Um, and then yes, everybody's legs are, you know, a little bit of a different length, but one of the th other things that's really nice about this fabric is that because it has, it has a nice weight to it. You can kind of place that in same where you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause there's always like a certain place on the leg that I think you kind of like your leggings to hit. So that it has a ton of elasticity. So if you want to pull it for most women, unless you're, you know, I make exceptions for, you know, if you're six, two and you're all legs, you probably won't be able to do this. But even with myself, I'm five ten, and I can, I can place a seven eighth tight a little bit lower on my leg when I want to, or pull it up a little bit when I want to yeah. without like having creasing and that type of thing. It's a great, great fabric. Nice. All right. Let me, I know we have Michelle here manning the, the questions. Um, oh yeah. Oh my I gosh. Look at this. I'm not All right, missing. Lizette likes the higher waist. Great. So does Elizabeth. Oh, Tatiana, we're getting a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of good things. Maya. Yes, Lizette, I hate rolling too. <laughs> can you can you can you check and see if Michelle's texting to see if she has any questions that are missing? I know we have Michelle in here how helping. Um, so no, this is great. I see a question from um, Alias. I think I'm saying I don't want to say the name wrong. You talking about sizing up or down for the tights? Um, uh, yeah. I also so like I actually liked because one of the things I hate is uh, when you bend over in your tights and you can see like a little bit of the like are coming through right so yeah. that's one of the things I like about the weight of this is that you you really you have, probably have to size down twice to get to that place yes um, depending on what size you are I would say if you want them really really tight you could you could size down but I would recommend for most people to buy your your usual size and I think for women we do tend to know what we like. Um, you know, at the tight sizing on this will be uh, not as not as tiny as Lulu's. It'll be a little bit more of a true, what well, I want. Yeah, let's, talk about size. Size. let's talk about sizing, because that's one thing yeah. I've been, we've been pushing on, you know, in like, we know that our, our runners, like you take a look at our runners, we don't look like, you know, the other runners of like what you would see runners, right? Like we talked about it in the, in the, in the, in the runners world article, yep. um, our runners, including me are big. We have bigger thighs with broader shoulders, men and women. And so what's really hard about, and I've learned this cause Sherry's taught me this about, um, you know, getting big sizes is that it, it is manufacturers will like double your price. If you try to like go beyond like a certain size, can you talk a little bit about that and then see how we've kind of like figured out how we can fit, in it sharing a little bit right so um bit. and so like men's and women's are a little bit different so i'm going to talk about women's first because i do see um will my leggings slide down if my phone is in my pocket no um she knows she's just give me snacks i just can't have my pants back <laughs> these guys are going to be these are these, these are all there. okay well uh, but you know i do want to answer the question so <laughs> we will be um it, it is it is because diversity is so, so important. The minute we can expand sizing, we're really committed to. So I think this is one of the most, well, one of the broadest breaths of sizing for women that I've seen in an emerging brand. This yeah. is usually, so we're offering these items in extra small through extra large. Mm -hmm. And because of the fabrics that we chose, they cover a lot of sizes. So we fit, our sample size is a small, and we fit that on a couple of different women who both are smalls, but as we know, a small is not a small is not a small. We're all shaped a little bit differently. What you have a small with a very, very small waist and, you know, and bigger thighs, you can have a straight waist and no hips. There's, you know, there's a small comes in all shapes and sizes. So we did put this on as many bodies as we could to really be able to look at that. And the other part was we picked fabrics that really, really perform and really will cover the sizes that we're saying in the size, um, in the size chart that they will cover. So as we get up to an extra large, we are, um, we are covering sizes, I think conservatively, you know, 14 to 16. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, quick question. I know that um, Elaine has asked, is the inseam going to change with each size? Um, yes, or, I will be grading the inseam. Okay, yeah. Right, so it's only a quarter inch grade. And most of that is, you know, the, you don't necessarily, as your size change, you don't necessarily become taller. There is a little bit of a, you know, and again, I, because I, I work with 
creatives, but I also work with a lot of numbers. So there's a standard called ASTM standards, and it's kind of the gold standard in measurements, whether it's body measurements, which is what I look at it for, but also like everything, you know, like engineers use, use ASTM measurements all the time. So they, that's all they do is they look at, at means and measurements. So, um, that's really what we're basing our grade on, on that. And then some of it, there's a little bit of, of, of just finagling based on what we know is happening in the industry, what we know is happening with body types. So there is a little bit of a grade in our inseams. I do give a little bit of a bigger grade between like, let's say an extra small to small, because that is where we generally do see that stature become, you know, like the, you know, you, you, you do tend to be a little bit shorter, extra small. Are there women who are six feet tall and are extra smalls? Yes. But will these, these still fit them? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I think I'm also, I feel like we're coming out so bold, Ellie. And like, if we mess up, you know, here and there, people are going to be like, oh, they said they're going to do this. So, I mean, this is still a new brand. You know, I just want to say that, like, this is still a new brand. Like, and we're trying to figure it out. And we're trying to do, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to be different. We're trying to, to actually meet our community where they are and meet our people where they are and really create out of, like, no one else is doing this. Like no one else is doing this. I think, Cheryl, sure, you said that there's one guy who makes X amount of dollars in New York City because he's the one guy that they fit on, right? Right. They're he like, makes a million model. dollars here as a fit model. Um, but, fit you know, it is much harder for women because we have vanity sizing. We have, there's just, there's been a lot of movement within, um, you know, what is, I think that there's not going to be a woman on this call who doesn't have seven sizes in her closet hmm. right you have like maybe the size that you identify as and then you definitely have some that are smaller and some that are bigger and in your jeans pff, depends on the day of the month yeah you know and well guys you know we, we have the privilege of not you know at least me i mean i'm sure there are, there are guys who who fluctuate a bit but like i you know i know a medium is a medium but even but, no, right, but, but even the way men's like, and this is like a whole nother thing because I don't even get me started on this. Everything's easier for you guys. Um, yeah. But you, for example, like the way a men's pant is sold, it's like 32, 32. It's like the measurement of your waist by the length of your inseam or 32, 30 or whatever it may be. So, and, and then you guys get pockets and everything. But one thing that I love about pioneers, we get pockets and everything. So that yeah. was absolutely let's that talk was about absolutely it. important we uh, do you remember people. sid how we just absolutely like brainstormed for like like for an hour staring at that half tight how are we going to make the pockets like just perfect because we ended up with that asymmetrical back pocket yeah, we're gonna which, move which you can't see on this one but that is actually going to have an asymmetrical back pocket so that one side of it is big enough for your phone if you want to put it into that pocket, into the back waistband pocket. And then the other side's big enough for like a credit card or some cash. But when we had them the same width, neither yeah. one was quite big enough for a phone. And I was like, that is not acceptable. It has to be an option. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk about this. All right. So we had originally designed four pieces for men, four pieces for women. But as soon as we got some of the men's stuff, the women didn't want to take it off. And so yes. there are two pieces that are now gender neutral. I think that's the term we're going to go with, gender neutral. Yeah. Um, and one is this is this um, jogger. That's phenomenal, by the way. Um, so tell us about the jogger. In, okay. In the matte color, obviously, because uh, yeah. now- Well, this is this is matte, but you know what? If you, if you like just show them a little bit inside, we got a little gloss in there because, you know, we have to have a shout out to the streetwear crowd around this, right? <laughs> so it's got like a really cool, like, you know, just like gloss finish on the inside. It's a really, really beautiful fabric. It's a beautiful weight for when you'll be, when you'll be getting it this summer. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous stretch. The reflective print that you've already seen. This sample was one of the ones that was a little bit further off than the other ones. So I'll talk through some of those. The jogger will be a jogger that has a, an elastic on the bottom, which you don't see on this sample. Yeah, so and, this also, and, also zip, and also zips the bottom. Zip yeah. Because I also, I just love that as an attitude. You know, like there's a whole different attitude when you've got your like pant bottom zipped and when yep. you've got them unzipped, right? So, <laughs> and you know, without saying a word, you can tell everybody how you're feeling. A little bit on this, but one of the things that was so cool about these pants is that when the samples came in, and I was really fortunate being 
product person that I got these samples first. Yep. And Sid got his package 24 hours after me. But we were so, during the pandemic, so desperate to get him as much imagery as we could right away because he didn't get his package yet that my daughter and i went out to a parking garage and she started putting everything on and we were just taking pictures so that we could send them to sit so he could see them like on the body and she put these on because it was cold and she's like oh yeah oh these are great and that's she exciting. like did not want to take them off and so that's one recommendation that i have depending on how you want to wear it if there's any of the ladies out there that are looking at this jogger i would almost recommend so often women buy down a size when they're buying like you know what you want to say gender neutral or co-ed or whatever you want to call it um women tend to bend to, to buy down but you'll see in the imagery on the crowdfunding that our women are still wearing the men's medium and they look mm. amazing in it. So part of it again is like good fabric choices and some good tailoring around that. Um, you know, lots of pockets, the right hand pocket, we actually have a double pocket on the right hand yeah. side. So like a, your normal like hand pocket, you put your hands in, you whatever, but there's also hidden right behind it that has its own like slightly smaller bag is a zipped phone pocket so that you can like slide your phone in it. And, but what one of the things we did is we, we shortened and we made just that little pocket bag a little smaller. Do you ever like have like, I love my hand pockets, but you put your phone down to one, they can drag down your pants, but also they kind of fall way down there and yeah. just don't look great. So it kind of like sits it up a little bit more on the hip. It's just big enough for an extra large size phone and it's secure, which is always a nice thing to have. Especially for running. You know, um, yeah. I had a, I had a buddy, so I had people trying these out and what people were telling me were, yeah, I ran in it and I couldn't really feel it. Yeah, and, I, Good. and If you can't tell it's there, it's that comfortable and it, it's that like, it's not in your way, you know, if you're going for exactly. a run, but it's also super dope. Did we end up removing this pocket on the back? I can't remember. Yes, we did. Okay, yeah. We yeah, we put it. the zipper. We put the the zippers on the um, on the, bottom. the bottoms instead. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Um. So I made a mistake and was um, going through this very fast, and I put the option of matte or gloss. We're not. I don't. We're not going to do the, the gloss for season one. We're just going to do matte. So for folks on in here, I'm also going to make that update where I can. Um, yeah. So. This is one, and then the second one is this sweatshirt that I'm not taking off. <laughs> this sweatshirt is also a gender neutral sweatshirt. Um, we actually uh, lucked out. So this is the only fabric that's different from everything else. Um, and the reason why is because our manufacturer had some extras from another brand that was making something and left it, right? Is that is that how, it, is that what happened? I'm sorry, I'm laughing at so much nips can go into the pockets, LOL. <laughs> True. All that right, one time before we go to that question. So that wasn't a question, it was a statement and from in, in the chat. I'm trying uh, to check the chat as much as I can. Um, but you are correct, Elizabeth. That um, is indeed correct. So I, I saw a question and Michelle's asking me too. Do we mm -hmm. know are we uh, are women are worried about reinforcing where the thighs touch, the, the inner thigh area in particular for women? Um, do the, do these fabrics like, I, I know, I don't think we reinforced it, but I, I don't know. No, it's not reinforced. What we do have in there is we have a, we have a gusset at the crotch. So that just having that shape in there is reinforcing in its own. Can you, yep. You can see that right there. It is a traditional triangular gusset. They do that is reinforcing like right at one inch below the crotch, which tends to be the area where the um, thighs are rubbing the most. And then the other thing that I'll say is just, we are seaming this with what's called a flat lock. Um, so it's very smooth because what happens sometimes when, when your legs are coming together from, you know, just from just that friction is Isn't when you have lock? the raised seam, that's actually what's creating some of the issues when it comes to like blowouts and whatnot. Yeah. So I don't anticipate big issues with that, with this fabric. It's just a really, it's a really nice, it's a very smooth fabric. And I think it'll help keep some of that friction down. It's mm -hmm. not a highly, highly compressive fabric, but it does have like a great, a, a good amount of elastane and it will give, you know, I, what I will call moderate compression and, and, and just feel really good. Nice. Um, and so sometimes you say things that I don't even understand. So flat, flat lock means it's like, it's like smooth, right? Like just... Right. So 
I'll, I'll, I mean, if anybody, I love this kind of stuff. So I'll do. So when they, so you have your seams that have like at the house in bulk, but whenever you have seams, you are putting two things together, right? Yeah. Flat lock, you actually, your seams are touching almost like this. So there's much less this and it's like this. And they're actually using the thread right through here to, to create that. So you have a very low profile in your seam. <laughs> yeah, I sorry. I just saw that and it, it made me <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, at any rate, so, so that's what a flat lock seam is. Basically it's taking from having two layers here to making it look like this. So again, when the profile is low, and so if you think about it, when you have this and then you have it, the same thing on the other side of your thigh, when those two, are creating some friction that's actually when you start to see erosion of your fabric the leaner that that line is the the less you'll see that okay great um are the men the men's leggings no not yet that's another thing um uh that people have been asking for for real though um here for the leggings for men yeah that's coming jeremy at some point i mean season two maybe we don't know yet um all right so back to the oh, and jeremy it's gonna be so good I love making some men's tights because they are, yeah, no, no, no. We have a half that coming. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, remember the gender neutral half that we're looking at? That's going to be really cool. Yeah. That's going to be really cool. Um, do you want to talk about the stretcher? Yeah. So this was, you know what? We just, a lot of people said, I wish there was a sweatshirt. And we went, yeah. So it's a, it's a really clean, the, the fabric is, is really, is really, really yummy though. So yeah. you can't see it, but the inside, it actually, it feels like velour. It, it looks like velour. It feels like velour. It's mm. really, really, really soft. But then the outside it has, as you can see, it has like this really kind of like subtle sheen. It's not a champion sweatshirt. It yeah. is definitely um, a performance streetwear sweatshirt. Yeah. And, you know, and we kept it, we kept it kind of like, clean and gorgeous. We um, set this, the shoulder seams uh, a little bit off so that that will look great. Just put in the bottom band. We have a secure zippered pocket that we're set into the back of the garment. So it just opens right there on the right hand side and the pocket bag goes to the back. Yes. So that's big enough for a phone and, and probably six or seven nips. <laughs> Six or I just, but don't nips. put your phone and your nips in the same pocket just in case yeah. you didn't, the cap's not on right. So ever since I got these sweatshirts, and these are still obviously first prototypes, we haven't even talked about making any changes, um, Sherry, but like I literally wear, wear them every day. And I let um, and I let someone borrow the, the black one just to test it, and he's been wearing it a lot too. So. And has he, have, has he run in it? He's running it. He's hung out on it. Yeah, he's running it. It's been good. Um, so did he, did he find that it was wicking well? Because that was one of the questions I just saw through the chat. I think so. Um, I'm going to do another test on it myself and run with it. Um, so from, the, from a fiber standpoint, it should. But I'd like to see because one of the things that I really loved, we both like, because we saw this fabric swatch come in and we both touched it and went. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, agreed. But I'm, I'm excited to have this tested on the body because, like I said, this was a style that we that we added. It was kind of like um, at the crest of um, all of y'all. Yes. All right. So last couple items here. We're almost done. We have the basketball short and we have our. I love that hat. OK, um, so we'll start basketball. with the basketball short. So this is a two in one short and we actually have updated it quite a bit from what you're seeing here. Yeah. Um, it uses now the same bodywear fabric that we're using in the women's tights and sports bra um, uh, for the inside liner. So again, mild compression, really gorgeous. Uh, show them the pockets in the inside. So many pockets. I, I really like pockets. Yes, there um, are pockets. Uh, yep, so, so there's a pocket right on that inside liner so that you can slide your phone like up and under your short, which is really secure. It has a little bit of an envelope fold up top, so it won't be bouncing out when you're running. So it's a really good place to keep it. Secured. And it's on the right and the left so that you can, you know, if you have a card you want to keep on the other side, whatever. So I really like those like internal hidden pockets yep. that are inside the uh, two-in-one short. I, I like it because like two and ones become more and more popular within the running community. Um, what I think is so great about this that I haven't seen anywhere else is like the styling of it's so great. Like it's not quite that 
tiny little like you know um marathon yeah. short we've made it a little and shorter though we have made it a little we shorter. did make it a little shorter but here you know what's funny i listen to um npr all the time and i actually heard an interviewer that was talking about somebody did a study and they were like five and a half inches is exactly the right inseam for men um throughout the age because for I, for I guess for whatever reason men on men the legs are the last thing to go and so shorter inseams are in for shorts on men and i yeah. was laughing and laughing because i'm like i think that's exactly what we shortened that inseam to is and i'm yeah. like i feel thank you i feel seen npr it's great um great pockets i love the pockets they're a little hidden too which is phenomenal i love it and this is an ode to basketball, like basketball shorts. Like we wanted something that was different, running. Right? We wanted something that performs, but we wanted something that looks like a basketball short, but you can run in. And so it came a little long, we're shortening it and you can wear it out. And um, it's really cool. Everything in the line is sweat wicking and absorbing. Um, that's like number one. We wouldn't pick yeah. fabrics that they weren't. Um, all right, so last couple items here. Last item really is. And hat. actually just to go back to that, cause they were asking, the inseam on the basketball short, it actually ended up just around at six and a half. And okay. again, that also grades a little bit. So it's not quite as long. I think the one that, that Sid is holding is eight. We, we shortened it by, by about an inch and a half. Want to show a little more leg, man? Yeah, yeah. A little bit more leg. I know there's a lot of guys in here who want more leg. Um, all right. So these hats, phenomenal. 100% merino wool. Just, I don't know, just classic. Just classic and beautiful. Put it on, put it on, put it on. I love this hat. I'm gonna put my favorite color on, the mustard. <laughs> love the mustard. The mustard. Yeah, so we just went with a really classic, gorgeous um, beanie styling on this. Um, you know, but it's got a nice wide cuff so that if you are running, because again, we always wanna have like, everything needs to look great it needs yeah. to be able to like have your style have your aesthetic but it needs to perform too so you can roll those down over your ears on really cold days um yeah. kind of place it where you want you know so if you if you you know it's it's just it's like it's it's super versatile and the wool is gorgeous this is a it's a really beautifully chunky knit rib hat yeah. um absolutely just a classic. It's just a classic. You don't need much. The colors are the colors, fantastic. Yeah. We were we were joking earlier because um, you know I was trying to decide you know which hat um, as a, as not only the head of, head of product but a supporter on the crowdfunding site. Hint hint everybody. Right. Sharing is caring. Um, you know, I was like going through, I'm like, oh, which color do I get? Which color do I get? Because I just got my email to like pick my styles and pick my colors. And I had the hardest time deciding. I went with tan though, but you can throw it into the chat if you think I should have gone with another color. I think that um, this is my favorite color. I know it is. Everyone's favorite color. <laughs> um, what, you know what? I had to like beg for that color with the uh, Merino mill. I know. But they I gave it to us. Yeah, more pictures coming soon. Uh, I just want to touch. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the reason why we chose to go with the crowdfund campaign, um, and it's because we. Ca I came up with these ideas. I came up with these products. I hired the folks that that I wanted to be a part of this. I found Sherry. I begged Sherry. I probably courted her for like three months <laughs> until she <laughs> agreed to join us. Um, that but is like, like not even true. Uh, I was like, three conversations. I, I, three there, conversations. I was like, I'm like telling the story of like Pioneers Run Crew and everything yeah. else. And I was like, No, you're right. You're right. It I, was like, you know, with, you know you've got some beautiful people here in the chats that are like, Give me, you know, take my money. And I was like, Take my time. A little bit, a little bit. But, a little bit. You know, you know, I had, you know, I had a little bit of money set, set aside and we got through and it just, you never know. You never really know how much. You don't understand how much money goes into this stuff until you do it. And so once we got it to a point where we were ready to be like, all right, let's let's like order some samples and stuff, basically running out of money. And I would try and sell it to people and be like, hey, I got this great idea. I got this great community. I got these great products. My team stacked. You know, let's talk about it. And they were like, yeah, OK, maybe, maybe, you know. And so I really got tired of asking people. And so I was like, you know, what? we're going to figure out how to use the community to launch this thing. And um, and we went with crowdfund and you guys launched it like this thing is reality because you met our minimum order amount literally to the dollar. And then from there, 
we can expand or we can make more. And now, you know, going for that $50,000 range where we're, we're trying to hit to, to launch our, our um, e-commerce. And then after we hit that, we have more plans that we're going to talk about, but, um, but please help us get there to 50 K. We're almost there. We're within $5,000, $4,000. Less than that. I have, I stock us. Yeah, I know. It's like, on, it's on refresh, like constantly. And so we'll be able to launch our e-commerce platform and, you know, and a lot of what we do is give back to the community. And so like as soon as we get over that $50,000 hump, we got to get there first. We're going to start talking about what we're going to be doing for youth, youth running in the city. Um, it really, because if you want to change the future of running, you got to start with the youth. If you want to change, you know, all the issues that they were talking about this year, like you have to start with the kids and, and then see, you know, as they grow into the sport. And so we have a lot of work to do. Um, but this is just, you know, this is the fun part. This is a phenomenal part. Yeah, and we have some some great ideas too because you know we know we opened this dialogue an hour ago talking about community, and I think talking about community like it's been doing is a great way to close out the hour too. And we have so many ideas because one of the things, and we need to like get this on the calendar. Said we were talking about doing um, a self defense for women seminar, so that could yeah. be something that we would also, if any of the women that are, that are here today, if you're interested in. Um, participating in something like that, either live if you're in the area or via something like this, a Zoom or Google Meet, this type of thing. Um, you know, that's, we've absolutely, it's something that, let's face it, uh, women runners, we're we're aware of that. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, my daughter and I are both um, practicing martial artists and have a real passion for um, self-defense for women. So, you know, we've, we, we'd love to put something like that together for the, uh, for all the women, be runners or not, that are out there. But again, just like all of it, we just, we just want to be out there in the community as soon as we can. Yeah, absolutely. With all of you so much and all of the support that, you know, like even being here tonight, it's supper time, it's after work, you're probably tired. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Seriously, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and we definitely would not be here literally without the community. Um, and so last question here from Sharon, will there be pop-ups? We will definitely be doing pop-ups, but we need to fund pop-ups too, right? Like, right. so like we $50,000 gets us our e-commerce platform, gets the design, it works really well. $75,000 gets us that youth running program. Like we're gonna put that up ahead of pop-up, right? We're gonna put youth running, you know, bringing this to the kids before if we then get, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, we'll start to think about being able to go to different marathons and do pop-ups um, in different cities. But um, I think true to what we talk about and what, what we've created with pioneers, like we have to put the community first. And so that is what we do. Oh, can I roll back? Cause I see a lot of like people talking yeah. about the beanie. Yeah. Um, so if you've ordered the beanie on, and Sid, correct me if I'm mistaken, because I think that the beanie, we will be able to ship sooner, right? Yeah, I haven't told them, but yes, we will be able to ship the beanie as soon as I'm sorry, I didn't yes, know. Hundred percent, no worries. But um, yeah, we'll be able to ship the beanie sooner. There we go. We, we were don't just know like, you know what? It's such a winter piece. If there's any way we can get this out to our supporters, um, you know, in in like the early spring, so that you know, yeah, I know a lot of you can, but there was a comment in there early. I am also a sweaty buddy. I cannot wear that beanie in August, so. Um, I gotta, gotta get it to me a little bit earlier so that I can start like sporting my pioneer stuff sooner rather than later. I know that. For so sure. I said, um, I think, I think that's, I think we're good. I want to, I want to shout out a couple more people that just joined this Marquise Bowden, shout out Marquise Bowden. What's up? Um, actually I love his story because he started running in his early, late twenties, early, you know, mid late twenties and, um, found a running crew similar to what pioneers run crew does. Um, and is now chasing Olympic trials. Um, Congratulations, yeah. good luck. So, super dope, he's putting on for the culture and he actually does some work with Tracksmith too. That's um, that's actually how I found him, which is really cool. Um, they, they, they did that, like the Boston movie on him. And so thank you, Mark Marquise for, for pulling up here. Um, yeah, man, this is, that is, that is what we're doing. I think that is it. That is fantastic. Um, and, and so Sid, are we gonna do this again? Uh, maybe let's see hopefully if we do it we again have another we're... round of samples coming if you guys want to see the next round yeah the exactly. colors exactly um thank you everyone for coming out michelle shout out michelle she was on here um helping 
Michelle's in DC. She's uh, she's the homie. She's been working with us on this. So thank you, everyone. Um, more to come. Appreciate you, Sherry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, all right.